Welcome back for part two. We're gonna kick it off with Adobe Dimension, opening up that file and putting all of our pieces in, styling them with materials, and then how to render. So let's get to it. I have my Adobe Dimension software open and I'm going to click create a new project. Now here's the default. Every time you start a new project in Dimension, this is what it's gonna give you. Now I always go to zoom at the top and click 100% so you can see how small it actually is. So this size is great if you just want a preview, if you're trying to rough out an idea, just get like a wireframe going. But if you're looking for a high res render, what I always do is click on this frame, hold option and shift and drag until I hit about 2000 pixels wide. And then I will also come to resolution and type in 300 instead of 72. 72 is low res, 300 is high res. So that will give you a really nice crispy rendering at the end. Because like I said, if you just go with their defaults, you're going to get something really small. It's not ideal for most portfolio pieces, I would say. So now that we have our canvas ready, I'm going to start dragging in those OBJ files. So here we are. I'm gonna start with the bottle. I'm also gonna set up my shape a little bit. Now that I know where it's gonna sit, I'm going to drag this around. I like having a center horizon line. Call me old school, call me art school, <laughs> whatever. I always like to have it centered with these lines. And to make it easy for myself, I'm also going to create a camera bookmark and I will name it front so that I can ground myself in space and, and know what, Where's the front? I can get my bearings very easily. So now that I have the bottle, let me get the bottle front and back. And I'm just gonna line these up roughly because there are settings in the Align Tools panel that will help me to get everything looking really snatched. But for now, I'm just gonna place things roughly where they belong. All right, and so since I wanna see inside, I am going to skip ahead and add materials so I can get a peek inside, make sure I'm placing things in the right spot. So I'm in the standard materials panel and the bottle is glass. I'm just dragging the basic glass to our objects here. And I also want to rename these so that it is easy to know what I'm clicking on. And I'm gonna highlight all three of these. Let's just get these in line. So I've clicked the align panel and now I'll click on this align center button and now as I'm moving around you can see I have my object here and if we hit our render preview we can see how it's going to look once it is rendered. I think that's looking really great so I'll go back to my camera bookmark and click on front and I'll turn off that render preview because it's going to make my fan really loud. Now I'm going to drag in my straw. We're just going to put that on the side for now because I do want to get the nozzle in the whole top section situated. So I'll drop in this piece. Try to put this inside. I wish I knew all the names for these pieces, but I'm just kind of naming them what makes sense to me. This is inside top and this is inside bottom. Select both of those and align them to the center. Let me zoom in and see what's happening. Just a few little tweaks here and there. So if I look back at my reference image, I can see that the little bottom piece is clear plastic. So I'll go ahead and drag inside bottom. We'll make you clear plastic. Um, if you can see my settings here, then I can go to the translucence panel and apply translucence so that it is see-through. And then the little inside part, that appears to be glass. I'll grab glass and I'll apply that to the inside top. And now since they're aligned and combined, I'll drag them up. But I'm gonna group them to be inside pieces. And I will group the bottle since I have those pieces where I like them as well. Bottle, inside pieces, both of those folders are selected and I will click group or I'll click center and center. And that way I can see that they're lined up. Now I'll take the plastic material and drop it on our straw. Translucence will make that pretty much like 94%. And then I'm going to drag it to where it lines up with that those inside pieces. Gotta get a few different angles to make sure that I am placing it where it needs to go. Boom and boom. Sometimes it just takes a few tweaks to get it how you want it and that's okay because 
it's better to get it right the first time. All right, and now we've got the rest of the top pieces to put in. So we'll drag these in. I'm just gonna put them to the side for now. Get a better angle up top. Top number three, top number two, and top number one. And now I'll use my tweak tools here to get everything lined up. I'm gonna highlight all of those, come back to my line panel, and I'm just gonna align them how we have for most everything else. Now I can move them, they're all selected together, and I'll go ahead and group them. I still have a few more tweaks to do, but this will be the top. So within the top, I can go and I can select each of these pieces. I'm getting close to make sure that I am accurate. I like to get down real low sometimes so that I can see, especially with these small little pieces that have some gaps between them. They shouldn't have gaps between them. We'll fix those. And then we'll move down number two and number one. Let's see what we've got going on. Number one looks pretty good. Yeah, number one looks pretty good. And then the last little piece is that nozzle. So we'll drag our nozzle into space. This is when it helps to know what the front is and what the back is because it's pretty symmetrical otherwise except for this nozzle piece. The nozzle does tell us what the front is. All right, just move until it sinks into the top piece. Beautiful, and we'll name that nozzle and drag it into that top group because the last step that I wanna do is I kind of want the inside pieces in the bottle for now, and I want the straw inside the bottle for now. I might move them out later, but what I wanna do is get this aligned. Actually, the straw might throw things off, so I'll put the straw to the side for now, but everything else is symmetrical, so when I use these align tools, It'll make sure that the nozzle is right in the center. And then if I need to tweak the straw, I totally can, but it didn't move it too far. And I think it looks pretty great. The last step, let me go back to front. I can even zoom in now that I know what the height is. I can zoom in so we get a close-up rendering. You can also add other bookmarks. So if you wanted one to the side, I always hold shift because it makes sure that I'm moving on axes. Um, it makes it so that if I take one on the right side and then I want to take one on the left side, that at least it's, you know, it's not like right and left. It's got it pretty much on the same axis. So feel free to add as many camera bookmarks as you want. Again, you can always change them later. That's what I'm going to do now is I'm going to reposition this closer and then I'm going to come to front and use this little spinny arrow. And now every time I click on this, it will take me to that new front that I have saved. And the last part I need to do is add metal to these top pieces. So I'm going to click and drag metal to all four of these pieces here. And the reason I like to create these all separate is because if I wanted to add a different color, so say I wanted this top three piece, if I wanted this to be a uh, black pinstriping. It's easy to do that when it's all separate, but if you create them all together, then you might not have that flexibility and you'll have to go back and change it later. So I'm gonna add some roughness and I'm gonna bring the metallic. So if I just remember that we're doing 30 and 60, then I can go apply that to all the other pieces. So roughness of 30, metallic of 60. You can see I'm just clicking on these arrows and typing in my numbers that I want because it helps me be precise and match everything up. And with the nozzle, I think I do want it a little bit darker. And maybe I'll just go ahead and apply a matte finish to it just to be sure that it's going to be plastic matte, not shiny like the rest of it. And I'll bring that down to be more of a black, like a dark gray, a charcoal. And there you have it. You can adjust the sheen, the metal on it, you can adjust the base, but that is how you assemble and create all of these pieces. Now you can play with the lighting, play with the background, and change all the settings you need to make a really cool convincing rendering. Um, it's easy just to drag and drop your designs and graphics onto the shapes here so that you can showcase your packaging designs in a really cool, unique way. No one will have any kind of renderings or mock-ups that look like yours. 
Um, so again, I just love this method and appreciate you following along and listening. All right, guys, that wraps up this tutorial. Please subscribe if you found it helpful. Comment below if you have any questions or run into any issues. Also comment below with what content you want to see next. I do take requests. Until next time, guys.